Hello, I'm Austin Gadient, CTO and co-founder of Valley Cyber, and today I'm going to be talking to you about ZeroLock, which is the first ransomware protection solution for hypervisors. Now, I'm going to talk about the different protections that ZeroLock provides, so I'll be going through this defense in-depth slide and talk through the different layers of protection that ZeroLock provides to the hypervisor. The first layer of defense is SSH MFA, or multi-factor authentication for SSH. When attackers compromise hypervisor infrastructure, one of the most common techniques that they use is stealing administrative credentials, then logging in as a normal admin user. So by providing multi-factor authentication using an authenticator app like Okta or Duo or Google Authenticator, we prevent the attacker from getting initial access to the system because they won't have access to that second factor. The next layer of protection is application allow listing. Application allow listing is very effective on a hypervisor because the list of applications running on the hypervisor don't change very often. And that allows us to only allow those allowed applications to run and block any malicious applications from running that might be added to the system, such as malware. The next layer of protection would be lockdown rules. So lockdown rules are fine grained access control rules that allow us to define when an application is allowed to access certain files, when it is allowed to run other programs, and when it is when it is allowed to make certain network connections. So lockdown rules are very effective at stopping many different types of malware, such as those that try to gain persistence on a system or those that steal data. It also enables an advanced capability called virtual patching. It's the ability to harden a system against a vulnerability by applying a lockdown rule that breaks an exploit for that vulnerability. The last layer of protection is AI behavioral detection. So this comes in the form of a few different models, one of them being a ransomware detection model. This is really useful for stopping and detecting living off the land attacks. And the ransomware engine will take a look at file encryption. When it sees file encryption, it will turn on automated remediation. So it will kick the attacker off the system. It can even restore files that have been damaged back to the pre-attack state. I'll also mention that the agent is very lightweight. It only uses about 50 megabytes of RAM, so it's not going to have any sort of performance impact on your VM workloads. And for VMware users, we do have a signed and certified VIV from VMware. So that means the solution has been validated and certified by VMware, and we are a VMware partner. So now we'll go ahead and jump into the demo. We can see different alerts across different categories here at the top. We also see a list of recent alerts on the system and an activity log, which shows all the recent activity on the system. It's essentially the audit trail for the system. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and try to log in to this ESXi system. And we're going to put our attacker hat on and take the place of an attacker that has stolen administrative credentials on the system. And you can see that even with the correct password, I'm still not able to log in. So this is the multi-factor authentication in action. And what I'll go ahead and do now is put in the authenticator token from my authenticator app. And you can see that using that authentication token, I do now have access to the system. And using this access as the attacker, I'm gonna go ahead and try to download some malware, make it executable, and then run it. And when I run that series of commands, you can see I got kicked off the system instantaneously. We jump back to the alerts. We can see a recent alert the blocked executable hash. So this was the application allow list in action. We can see a list of the files that were affected by the attack, the malware that was created and downloaded, and the Chmod operation, which modified that file. We also see a process tree, which shows up all the applications involved in the attack. We're gonna highlight certain applications in that tree, so it's easy for a threat analyst to see what was running and what was malicious in that process tree. We're also gonna provide full command line arguments, executable hashes, and IP connections. And you can see this attempt to run to fray 777. That's what was blocked by the attack. We can expand certain areas of the tree. We'll also see these wget commands that I ran, to download the ransomware, and then the chmod command that I ran to make it executable. So that's it for the demo of ZeroLock. If you have any questions about ZeroLock, feel free to reach out to us at info at valleycyber.com.